children of God, year is holy word, gather round the table of the Lord, eat his body, drink his blood, and we'll sing a song of love, Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Brothers, is offered for the soul of Popat Lal B. Patel and there's a funeral announcement. We pray for Mrs. Estelle Pereira also known as Stella and she was the next teacher of Divine Child School who recited Divine Light Cooperative Housing Society, completed her earthly journey on the 30th of May. The body will be brought directly to church at 4 p.m. on Monday the 3rd of June and the Mass will be at 4.30 p.m. at the Holy Family Church. Eternal rest grant unto her Lord and may your perpetual light shine May her soul rest in peace. Amen. Good evening friends. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with each one of you. The solemn feast of Corpus Christi celebrates the real presence of Jesus Christ in the Eucharist. At the Last Supper, Jesus transformed the bread into his body and the wine into his blood. The Church teaches that the Eucharist is the source and summit of the Christian life. During this feast, let us recognize Christ's presence in the Eucharist and ask ourselves, do we draw nourishment and strength from it? My dear friends, today as it was announced, we celebrate the Feast of the Body and Blood of Christ. As you know, on Monday Thursday is also the Feast of the Holy Eucharist. But the Church realizes the importance of the Eucharist and therefore has given us one more festival to bring out its importance and celebrate the Eucharist that Jesus has given us as a final gift. As also said in the introduction, the Eucharist is the source and summit of our life. Actually, the source, summary and summit. So, source is where our Christian life begins. Summary is everything we require for our lives actually is present in the Eucharist. And finally, the summit in heaven is just going to be one big banquet. But there's so much that happens in the Eucharist, sometimes it's not easy to get everything in. So I'll try to explain something about it at the sermon time. And as we begin this Eucharist, therefore, we examine ourselves and our own failure in appreciating what God has given us, his final gift at the Last Supper and upon the cross. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy on us gathered here. Christ, have mercy on us people. Lord, have mercy on us sinners today. Christ, have 
wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion grant us we pray to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruit of your redemption who lives and reigns with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever Amen. please be seated the first reading A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the rules. And all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words that the Lord has spoken, we will do. And Moses wrote down all the words of the Lord. He rose early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain and twelve pillars, according to the twelve tribes of Israel. And he sent young men of the people of Israel, who offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen to the Lord. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in the basins, and half of the blood he threw against the altar. Then he took the, bi he took the book of the covenant and read it in the hearing of the people. And they said, All that the Lord has spoken, we will do, and we will be obedient. And Moses took the blood and threw it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Kindly join our choir in singing the responsorial psalm. The cup of salvation I will raise. I will call on the name of the Lord. Please 
please repeat the cup of salvation i will raise i will call on the name of the lord how can i repay the lord for all his goodness to me the cup of salvation i will raise i will call on the name of the lord our response the cup of salvation i will raise i will call on the name of the lord how precious in the eyes of the lord is the death of his faithful your servant am i the son of your handmaid you have loosened my bonds our response the cup of salvation i will raise i will call on the name of the lord a thanksgiving sacrifice i make i will call on the name of the lord my vows to the lord i will fulfill before all his people our response the cup of salvation i will raise i will call on the name of the lord a reading from the letter to the hebrews brethren when christ appeared as a high priest of the good things that have come then through the greater and more perfect tent not made with hands that is not of this creation he entered once for all into the holy places not by means of the blood of goats and calves but by means of his own blood thus securing an eternal redemption for if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of defiled persons with the ashes of a heifer sanctify for the purification of the flesh how much more will the blood of christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to god purify our conscience from dead works to serve the living god therefore he is the mediator of a new covenant so that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance since a death has occurred that redeems them from the transgressions committed under the first covenant the word of the lord thanks be to god kindly stand alleluia alleluia Jesus open our hearts that as we listen to your word we may become a little more like you The Lord be with you and with your spirit A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Mark Glory to you O Lord On the first day of the unleavened bread when they sacrificed the Passover lamb his disciples said to Jesus Where will you have us go and prepare for you to eat the Passover 
And he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room where I am to eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. There prepare for us. And the disciples set out and went to the city, and found it just as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover. And as they were eating, he took bread, and after blessing it, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, Take, this is my body. And he took a chalice, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I say to you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, the Eucharist is truly the source, summary and summit of our lives. But we as Catholics don't realize and appreciate the beauty, the wonder that we have until sometime when we, we wake up. I, I remember some Protestants, who, what they had to say about the Eucharist. I remember one uh, person who came to India to preach a convert. He was, I think, a Presbyterian who became a Catholic later on. He said when he was a Presbyterian, you know, wonderful people, our Protestant brothers and sisters are wonderful, but sometimes they don't understand what we have. And he said, you know, these Catholics, I used to think these Catholics come to the Eucharist and it's all rituals, you know. They are filled with rituals. And then he became a Catholic through his own experience. I'm not sharing it with you here. And he said, when I became a Catholic, the most beautiful thing for me was the Eucharist. Exactly the opposite of what he thought before. When he understood what the Eucharist, we as Catholics believe in the Eucharist, he said, for him, the Eucharist was the most beautiful thing that he discovered after becoming a Catholic. I remember, uh, you might have heard of Benny Hinn. Have you heard of Benny Hinn? You have his shows. He came to Bombay and I don't know how many lakh of people went to BKC and he has his shows on TV. He said we don't, he, he, he's still a Pentecostal, a New Life, I don't know which church he has, he has his TV programs. But he as a Pentecostal says, we Pentecostal don't realize what the Catholics have in the Eucharist. And then he goes on saying, more miracles are worked out at the Eucharist than any other Pentecostal service. Unbelievable. Here you have a Pentecostal, a preacher, a leader of a church. More miracles take place at the Eucharist than any of our Pentecostal services. Another uh, great uh, popular Protestant convert, again a Presbyterian in this case, case, was Scott Hans. Have you heard of Scott Hans? He has written many books. One famous book is Rome, Sweet Home. Rome, Sweet Home. He has written maybe about 60 or 70 books. He is a theologian. He says, you know, for me, when I heard of the Eucharist earlier, I was totally against his whole idea of the Eucharist. And he said, you know, it's not scriptural. That's what he thought earlier. You know, they, they just mumble off some prayers at the Eucharist. <clears throat> and then he said, one day, a friend of his invited him to the Eucharist. And he said, okay, so because you're my friend, I will come. And he sat somewhere right in the corner behind in the church, in a dark place in the church, he said. And he said, when the Eucharist began, he realized that scripture is quoted and read much more at the Eucharist than at any of their services. And that's true. And I'm not talking about only about the Bible readings. The prayers that we have at the Eucharist are scriptural. Many of the things that we have in the Eucharist are all scripture based. And this is what he said. And then he became, not only started going for the Eucharist, but going to the Eucharist daily as a now a convert Christian. So here is the Eucharist for us. Something very precious which we are still beginning to understand. 
many priests, in fact nearly all priests will tell you what is the most important thing in their priestly ministry. For me, definitely, it is the Eucharist. Because here is where everything starts, here is where everything begins. And especially when you have the Eucharist in the morning, what a beautiful way to begin the day. Of course, you can have the evening, what a beautiful way to end the day, but I prefer the morning. So, where do we start? I have shared this once before, but uh, you know, something you need to repeat again and again. And I have shared, I worked out something called Eucharist at your fingertips. Have any one of you heard it before? Anita might have heard it before. <laughs> okay. Eucharist at your fingertips. Uh, very simple way I worked out. So, you know, we can't take everything of the Eucharist, but at least five key points of the Eucharist. I said, the more we read about the Eucharist, the more you discover you don't know about the Eucharist. Because everything has meaning in it. Even the candles over here. Why do we have the candles over here? Okay. Why do we have this table over here? But we won't get into that. So five things in the Eucharist. You'll remember it on your fingertips after Mass. When I meet you outside, I'm going to ask you, okay? And those who answer right, you'll get a gift. Don't ask me what gift. Okay. So now, Eucharist at the fingertips. First, the thumb. You can take out your fingers, all of you have your fingers with you. Take out your fingers, so just hold your thumb. Now you see between the thumb and the rest of the fingers, there's a space. And that's something important for us. Sometimes, you know, we are rushing, 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 and just about taking it in time for the Eucharist. I've reached on time. Okay? But being on time for the Eucharist is not being on time. To be on time to the Eucharist is to be five minutes before time. How often have you seen football players coming straight for a football game, or an athlete going straight on and running the 100 dash. No. There's warm-up. There's warm-up. Our choir is just practicing for half an hour before Mass. You need to warm up. You need to prepare. And so for the Eucharist, come five minutes before. I suggest five minutes. You want to come longer, but about five minutes is good. Just come and sit. What do you do in this at this time? Nothing. If you want to say some of your favorite prayers, pray them. If you want to just look at a blessed sacrament or any of the images, or just kneel, nothing else. It's a kind of, you know, acclimatizing yourself into the holy envi environment, a kind of break. This, believe me, seems such a simple thing, but you will find it so helpful if you put it into practice. So the thumb reminds you of space. Okay, I'm going to ask you at the end again. So space. So about five minutes before time is good. And I'm going to go around it because the center is the most important. From here we come to this finger. So I'm, I said I'm going to go around it. This is the smallest finger, our weakest finger, and therefore reminds us of our weaknesses. Christians actually don't focus on weakness, but when you see the Almighty God, when you're in the presence of the awesome God who loves you so much, automatically realize, Lord, where am I? Where am I? You realize not that we are sinners, but compared to God's goodness, where am I? And so we think of our weaknesses. Now normally at the Eucharist, we don't have much time to think about it. But if you prepare for it before, that five minutes before, it will help you. But if, the first thing you think of, remember it's not a head exercise, it's a heart exercise. So the first thing that comes into your heart where you have failed, maybe something that happened, do you know today? Oh Lord, you know, I was so rude to the watchman today. Or that fellow honking behind me, and every day someone is honking behind you. You know, instead of, I gave him galis unnecessarily, I got angry. Lord, I'm sorry. Or you might think of something that happened 30 years back. The Lord will lead you in any way. Okay? Think of one thing. Don't think of too many things, otherwise you'll never do it at all. Lord, I'm sorry. That's it. So when you come before him, one area where you have failed. So, first is what? Space. Then the weakest finger. One weakness. One area where you have failed. I said we are going around. Now we come over here. What finger is this? At this time we say voting finger. Okay? But when I show this, is a pointing finger. No? You, what have you done? Why are you lying down in church? Okay. So, pointing finger. And this comes to the readings, okay? Where the Lord is pointing the way for us. Now we have two readings on Sun on weekdays, three. There's another thing altogether on the beauty of the 
the liturgy, the readings that we have, many Pentecostal churches say, I don't know how you all have done this, that you all have got the whole Bible included into your liturgy so beautifully in the two-year cycle and three-year cycle on Sunday. How you all have done this? I believe it's the work of God. So now, if you try to focus on everything that happens in reading, you will end up going a little crazy. So what do you do? God is a good teacher. He will only point out one thing at a time. So during the first reading, and you know very often, reading time we tend to dream. What is the one thing God is telling me in the first reading? You might find something. And if you are really looking, you will always find something. So what is God telling me in the first reading? Okay. What is God telling me in the second reading? Or in the, in the, in the gospel? Now if you find something in the first reading, but you find something in the second reading that really warms your heart more than the first, then keep the second. Forget the first one. Gospel reading, you find something even better, keep the gospel reading one. Okay? One point. Don't try to pick up two or three points because God is a good teacher. Finally, it's all put together in the sermon. So maybe in the sermon, today Father Gerard, oh, today Father, finally he said something worthwhile. So let me remember this one point what Father Gerard said. Okay. So maybe that one point you want to take for your, your point of rotation. God is telling you, take a look into this. Maybe nothing from the readings has struck you, but the, the Spirit has inspired you at this moment about something in your life. You know? You have been a good person. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's your take home. God, the readings are here, but God is speaking the whole time. So what is the one thing God is telling you at this moment of your time? Of, at the reading time. So one thing. Don't focus on too many. At least I have realized if I try to focus on too many things, I end up with nothing. The longest talk I go for or the shortest talk I go for, I only pick up one point. Always. Only one point. And I find it really helps me. So, what is this? Space. Okay, you know what space is? Come five minutes after mass starts. Okay. Five minutes before mass. Then, your weakest finger, one area where you have failed. And then we go to our pointing finger. What is the Lord saying to me? And then we come to this finger. What is this finger called? Ring finger. Okay? So the ring finger is a time when you make your offering to each other. And so we come to the time of the offertory. For me personally, the offertory is the which gives me real meaning in my liturgy, in my Eucharist. Because if I don't offer, what do I get back? Okay? So at this time, think of one thing. One thing in that day. Don't say after 10 years, Lord, you know, I'm going to free myself and offer you completely. No, today. What is the one thing the Lord is ask, asking me to offer him? Today. Maybe, you know, Lord, I, food has become the center of my life. Lord, today I offer up my food habits. Or maybe today, you know, Lord, I offer up, you know, that, that worry I have. Lord, I'm placing it on the chalice over there, on the pattern. Now you take charge of it. So one thing again. Anything, again, not that you think of, but the, Lord, the Spirit leads you. Remember, I said Christianity is a heart exercise, not a head exercise. So what is the Lord asking you? Now suppose you say, you know, this thing you're worried about. No, my God, my job, I don't know what to do about my job. You offered it. Now, are you still worried about it? If you're worried about it, maybe you have not really offered. You say, Lord, you have placed it over there, but when leaving the church, you took it back and put it back into your head to worry about. Wait. If you offered it, now you've offered it. Lord, now you help me. You help me. And believe me, the Lord will help you. Because now you say, Lord, I have done my part. Now you take charge. So, we go right round here. We come to the offering. And finally, we come to the center, the biggest finger, the center of it all. And that is what happens on the altar, where Jesus offers himself for us. You know, I always used to keep telling myself, I wish every church had only one big cross, crucifix in the center, nothing else. You know, like the one we have there, but I wish only that in the center. Because that's what the Eucharist is about. In fact, we are reminded that every altar must have a cross. We have one on top there, a little small one on the altar. To remind us of one thing. And what is that? Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. So whenever you come to the Eucharist, you know, we don't have that one cross, but I've realized every church 
I have not seen one church or chapel that doesn't have the 14 stations on the cross. It's not just one. So we are reminded, you look this side, Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Look that side, Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. You're, you're saturated with the love of God, what happens here. If you just take this message, even if it's in your head and you keep repeating it, soon it will seep down, percolate into your heart and you realize, I am loved. And once you know that you are loved and it hits you in the heart, you can never be the same again. That is what the whole Eucharist is about. So right in the center, Jesus loves me. So I have offered myself to him and at the Eucharistic prayer. The whole Eucharistic prayer takes place. I said, I'm not going to details. And finally, he offers himself back to me in Holy Communion. So that's the five points. Now let's see if we remember them. Okay? Are you ready? You want to revise with your husband, wife, children? Okay. First, space. Okay? So five minutes before time. Then which finger? Okay, last. We're going around. Which finger is the weakest? This finger. Even in piano, I'm told this is... The toughest to play. You can't reach there also. So your weakest finger, one area where you have failed, not thinking in your head, as the Lord leads you. Then we come to the pointing finger. What is the one thing the Lord is saying in the readings? Then which finger? The ring finger. My offering, as a husband and a girl and boy offer themselves, I offer myself to the Lord. And finally the center, the Eucharistic prayer and the whole prayer of consecration till communion time Jesus loves me God bless you let us all stand up and profess our faith together I believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ his only son our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary Suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We bring our intentions. As we celebrate the feast of his body and blood, let us bring before the Lord all our petitions, saying your responses, Lord, may your body and blood strengthen us all together. Lord, Lord, may your body and blood strengthen us. For our Pope, bishops, priests, and religious, may the Eucharist and the Word of God transform them, and may they, in return, transform the lives of those they minister to. We pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord may, may your body, body and blood strengthen us. us. For Catholics who keep themselves away from the Eucharist, may they realize they are lost and hasten to return to the community and participate in it. We pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord may your body, body and blood strengthen, strengthen us. us. On this feast of Corpus Christi, we pray for all our Eucharistic ministers and thank them for their commitment and sacred service to the housebound and sick of our parish. We pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord may your body, body and blood strengthen us. us, that the results of the elections may be according to your will, promoting justice, peace, and the common good of our country and its people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, may your body and blood strengthen us. Pray for community and personal needs. We pray to the Lord. Lord, may your body and blood strengthen us. We make these prayers through Christ our Lord. The offertory procession.
that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of this holy church. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we, we here present through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For Jesus is the true and eternal priest who instituted a pattern of everlasting sacrifice in the Eucharist and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering of the Eucharist as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna. In the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving you thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, Take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body which will be given up for you. Jesus has given his life for me together. Jesus has given his life for me. Deep bound reverence. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
do this in memory of me. Jesus has given his life for me together. Jesus has given his life for me. The bound reverence. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink, drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and to serve you. For unity humbly we pray, that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring us to the fullness of love, together with Francis, our Pope, our bishops, and all the clergy, religious and lay faithful. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Our loved ones gone ahead. Welcome them into the light of your face. And last of all, we pray for ourselves. Have mercy. Now with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Jesus, with Jesus, in Jesus, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, for all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our Father is very fond of us, and so in full confidence we pray. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy, thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Pray for deliverance. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every form of evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all useless anxiety as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. For peace, Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my kind of peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with each one of you. And with your spirit. The of peace. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Behold Jesus who loves us very, 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 very much. Happy are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, not worthy not that he should enter under, under my roof. But only say, say the, the word, word and my soul shall, shall be healed. healed. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us all to the fullness of life. Amen. Amen.
Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O oh, good Jesus, hear me. Within thy wounds, hide me. Suffer me not to be separated from thee. From the malignant enemy, defend me. At the hour of my death, call me. And bid me come to thee. Have thy saints, I may praise thee. For all eternity. Amen. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him, says the Lord. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age 
by reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. The notices. Notices for this week, Sunday, 2nd June 2024. Friday, 7th June is the Feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Adoration in church will be at 7 p.m., followed by the Feast Mass at 7.30 p.m. The main celebrant at the Feast Mass will be our Jesuit Provincial, Father Anil Pereira, S.J., he will bless our newly renovated Sacred Heart Cove in church. He will also hand over the frames of the Sacred Heart to our SCC animators to be circulated among SCC cluster families. The Divine Mercy Group is having its first yearly meeting on 6th June at 5.30 p.m. in the Xavier Room. New members are welcome. The St. Anthony's Novena at Bamanwada Hill starts from 1st June to 12th June. The Feast Mass will be celebrated on 13th June at 8 p.m. We will continue the recitation of the Rosary at 6.30 p.m. in the church right throughout the year. All are encouraged to participate in reciting the Rosary. We thank all those who have volunteered to lead in the recitation. We sincerely thank you for our last weekend collection of rupees 1,3100. Mass intentions, 3rd June, 7, 7 p.m., Month's Mind Mass of Albert Rodericks. 8th June, 7.30 a.m., Memorial Mass for Luis Fernandez. 9th June, 6 p.m., First Death Anniversary of Lorraine Mascarenus. Okay, revision time. Eucharist at your fingertips. Thumb, space. So remember, we're going around. Then we come to this finger, your weakest finger, one area where you have failed. Then which finger? Pointing finger, one area the Lord is pointing during the readings or the sermon. Then ring finger, offering. Something that you want to place and offer to the Lord. And finally we come to the center, the very Eucharistic sacrifice, the right of the communion. Jesus loves me and gave his life for me. Please stand. All of you all were excellent. You all answered right. So all of you all can have dinner today at home. The Lord be with you. And, with your and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And a very happy feast to each one of you. We should the same father. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done, things both great and small. And for Jesus Christ, your son, thank you most of all. You forgive us when we falter. You bring healing when we sin. You redeem our life from bondage and renew us deep within. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done, things both great and small. And for Jesus Christ, your Thank you most of